Another thing that the media has done over and over again that I've seen no telling how many times is they're trying to tout this number that there have been, I think it's 230, 238, something like that, uh, mass shootings this year, which is absurd because what they're trying to do there, the reason that they're getting to that number, is that they are using numbers for gang violence. In other words, they're defining it not as the FBI defines it, which is four more people who are killed, not shot, killed, and four more people killed, and it's not related to gang violence, and it's not family members. So, God forbid some crazy person murders his family of five, it's not a mass shooting. If he walks into his house one night and, and shoots them all up, that's not a mass shooting because it doesn't happen in public. So that's what the average person would consider a mass shooting. It's a pretty good definition when it comes to things like gang violence. First of all, people have to die. And second of all, if it's gang-related violence, then it's not some anomaly, some mass shooting like a school shooting, Columbine, Parkland. Those are the things that people think of as mass shootings, not two gangs going to war with each other in the streets of Chicago and taking one another out. And so this is the irony of the whole thing. Whenever you come out and talk about that and talk about how gun homicides or gun crime are a much, much bigger deal, and statistically they are, then these mass shootings that people tend to gravitate towards, all of a sudden they say, well, you're racist, and the only reason that you're bringing that up is because you want to bring up that black people kill black people. Well, I mean, they do at a higher rate. I mean, that's just statistically accurate. And as I've always said, facts can't be racist. They're just facts. But nonetheless, they'll say that about any conservative that even attempts to bring that up when the conversation is about mass shooting. But then when they want to bolster the numbers of mass shootings, they immediately go to the largest number that they can find. And the way that they bolster those numbers is to include gang violence where people were shot, even if they weren't actually killed. You can't have it both ways. you got to pick one. Either a mass shooting is the thing that we all think of as a mass shooting. In other words, some person or people goes out and commits an act of violence that hadn't previously, that aren't connected to a gang or organized crime. And it's not like a family member. It's something that actually happens out in public with someone shooting indiscriminately into people. That's a mass shooting. What they're talking about is not. They're just trying to get the big headline, get the big number, and that's why they're trying to bring that up. Do you understand why, to, to people on the left, do you understand why people on the right don't want to give people on the left the benefit of the doubt after listening to this? I hope so, and I'm not saying this to just stick it to you. I really am genuinely reaching out here. After hearing all of this, do you understand why the right doesn't want to give the benefit of the doubt to people on the left? I spent a large chunk of my show yesterday talking about Senator Doug Jones and how I thought that Yellowhammer News, which is a general conservative-leaning website, how Yellowhammer News was going out of its way to put words in Senator Doug Jones' mouth and they were not extending him the benefit of the doubt. And in this case, I thought that they were overreaching. Even though I like Yellowhammer News and I like the, the author of that article. And you'll remember that I said yesterday that the reason it is so important for us to do that is because it's the right thing to do, and whether or not they extend that same courtesy to us, that should not affect the fact that we treat others the way that we would like to be treated. But looking at this, don't you understand why that's really hard for people on the right to do? Do you understand that now? And while I'm talking to people on the left, and I, I hope you are out there listening, I genuinely do, and, and feel free to comment and give some feedback, tell me why I'm wrong. That, that's fine. But while we're talking to people on the left, I find it so odd that they're rallying around this idea that we should be having gun control, and Lindsey Graham, who is another senator on the left that happens to have an R behind his name, is talking about red flag laws, and there's a myriad of reasons that that's a bad idea. I'm not going to cover that today because we don't know exactly what the legislation says or what it proposes, so I'm going to wait for it to actually come out. Don't want to jump the gun, pun intended, on this legislation. But the reason that Democrats are salivating at the mouth over gun control and that they're coming out about this like they, they always do, those are the people I'd like to talk to right now. Let's just say 
that you're somebody on the left that believes pretty much everything that the media says about Trump. That he's a bigot and a racist and he hates black and brown people, that he's actually a white supremacist, that he wants to tamp down anybody that disagrees with him. And remember that this is a guy who, even though he's done some things that I like, these are some things that I disagree with, refers to the media as the enemy of the people and has referred to people in, in Congress even that he does not like, refers to them as traitors. And let's say that you buy the narrative, even though it's not true, of the kids in cages and Donald Trump just wants to get rid of all the black and brown people. He wants to block Muslims from coming in. He wants to keep Mexicans and other people that aren't white from coming into the country. And he wants this racially pure nation. And although that's a load of bull, if you buy into that, why do you want them to take your guns away? Seriously. Do you really want Donald J. Trump, if he really is Hitler and he really is a fascist and all those horrible things that people on the left keep saying about him, if he really is all of those things, do you really want him deciding who gets guns and who doesn't? And especially do you want them deciding that based on things like whether or not you've said something that could be dangerous? Because in Donald Trump's mind, and by the way, I don't completely disagree with them on this, Ilhan Omar saying some people did something in reference to 9-11 or equating the U.S. to Al-Qaeda would be a pretty good indication that she's a dangerous person that doesn't need guns. Do you really want the government in control of whether or not you have the weapons to defend yourself, if that is the case? This is why it is a bad idea to give any government, regardless of who they are, that kind of authority. Because your guy won't always be in office. And yeah, conservatives were, I thought, reasonably worried that if President Obama had free reign and could do whatever he wanted and didn't have to deal with Congress or that pesky Constitution, that he would have immediately said, go confiscate the guns, get all of them. But if you're on the left and you really are that worried about President Trump, why are you not equally concerned that President Trump will look at that and say, uh, yeah, everybody that reads Snopes, uh, not Snopes, uh, Salon, everybody that's a fan of Vox, everybody that donates to Bernie Sanders, those people are clearly dangerous. I mean, we had that Bernie Sanders supporter a couple of years ago try to kill the Republican members of Congress, so clearly what we need to do is anybody that worked for Bernie Sanders or supported Bernie Sanders, we got to do something about that. You see why that's an issue? Don't surrender your liberties to anybody. Don't surrender your God-given rights to self-defense to anybody. Because your guy won't always be in office. And eventually, there is going to be somebody who you don't trust to decide what is and isn't dangerous making that decision for you. That's why you always err on the side of liberty and preserving individual rights. <laughs> Oh, hey, what are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.